regarding outcome of ceramic on ceramic total hip arthroplasties after 10 years at Cork University Hospital Ireland. And this, these surgeries were done between 2010 to 2012. And uh, regarding introduction, we know that ceramic have some special properties. And because of that, ceramic on ceramic bearing surfaces are an attractable option for primary total hip arthroplasty in young populations. And those properties are that, that ceramic is a hard material and it is scratch resistant that make it closer to the native hip joint. It is also wettable and that, has, that helps in lubrication. And it, the ceramic on ceramic bearing surfaces, it generates low wear debris, it has low coefficient of friction. And because of these properties, it is an attractable option for total parthoplasty in younger population. But we know at the same time from literature that uh, ceramic is a brittle material. It is prone to fracture. And we know that third generation ceramic have 14.6% risk of fracture and squeaking. To decrease these drawbacks, the fourth generation ceramic was introduced. And we know that fourth generation ceramic have 82% of alumina and 17% of zirconia. Its grain size is also smaller than the third generation ceramic. And that's why it is more resistant to the fracture and crack pop propagation. Also at the same time, it allows us to use the larger head size and thinner liner. And that's why there, will be, there is the increased range of movement of the total hip arthroplasty and there is decreased chances of dislocation of the total hip arthroplasty. Also some studies, one of the author, this is P. Hernigo, have reported that there is less skeletal muscle fat atrophy as measured on CT scan with ceramic on ceramic bearing surfaces as compared to the other bearing surfaces. And our recent randomized control trial have resulted, have reported the results in favor of ceramic on ceramic bearing surfaces as compared to metal on poly bearing surface at 20 years follow-up. The objective wise, the primary objective of our study was to assess the mid-term survival of ceramic on ceramic total hip arthroplasty and also to assess the patient reported outcome in ceramic on ceramic total hip arthroplasty. And secondary objective was to assess the complication related to the ceramic on ceramic total hip arthroplasty like implant fracture, squeaking, loosening, et cetera. Regarding patient method, our study design was prospective design. We collected all the data on prospective follow-up and the inclusion criteria was that all the patients who underwent ceramic on ceramic total hip arthroplasty at Cork University Hospital Ireland between 2010 to 2012. And the exclusion criteria, any patient who got intraoperative implant fracture or who, uh, who was having traumatic osteoarthritis or who was having revision or conversion. Conversion means that any patient who have previously DHS or IMNL done for proximal femur fracture and then it was converted to the total hip arthroplasty. So these patients were excluded from the study. Data collection wise, we collected data in the form of VOMIC osteoarthritis index SF12 score. And we collected these scores at six weeks, six months, two years, five years, and 10 years interval. And at each, at each follow-up, we did the X-ray also to, to rule out any sign of loosening. And any, Complaint of squeaking reported by the patient was also noted. Preoperative function score, age, gender, implant type, surgical approach, and type of fixation were also noted. Regarding results, the two surgeons who were well experienced and fellowship trained, they perform all the surgeries. Procedure wise, all the procedures done by preparing the estabulum first, and after that, we prepare the femur. And approach wise, two approaches were used. One surgeon used the lateral hip approach, the other surgeon used the posterior hip approach. And by that way, 113 patients were done by using the lateral approach, while 125 patients, 125 patients were done by using the posterior hip approach. Implant wise, the uncemented total hip arthroplasty, that is pinnacle and cement, was done in 205 patients, while hybrid total hip arthroplasty, that is femur, was cemented 
and cup was uncemented, and we used Trident Exeter implant in 33 patients. In all cases, we use Bilox Delta ceramic bearing on bearing, uh, bearing surfaces. This table is showing the demographic data of these patients which were included in the study. And from here, we can see that age-wise, we have three groups, that is between 16 to 30 and 31 to 60 and 61 to 40. And the most of the patients were between 31 to 60, that mean age was less than 60. Gender-wise, 151 patients were male, 87 patients were female. Surgical approach-wise, 113 patients were done by using lateral hip approach. 125 patients were done by using posterior hip approach. And fixation-wise, 33 patients received the hybrid fixation and 205 patients received the uncemented fixation. And this table is showing the clinical outcome in our study. From here, we can see that there is significant improvement in the Womack Osteoarthritis Index and the SF12 score in our study. And we can see from here that preoperatively, Womack score was 39.83, and it progressively increases over the follow-up six months, six months, six months, six, two years, five years, and 10 years. And at 10 years, it was 90.4. And similarly, SF12 has scored from 30.07 preoperatively to 34.40 at 10 years follow-up. And this table is showing the loss of follow-up and the complication. From here, we can see that unfortunately, we lost 23 patients at 10 years. At six months, we lost two patients. At two years, we lost 10. And then at five and 10 years, we lost 23 patients. And only four patients, that is 1.68% patient, received the revision. Two revision was done for the periprostatal fracture at 12 months and 18 months after a fall. And both of the fracture were fixed with the open reduction internal fixation using the plate and cables, while two revision were done for the infection. One patient was treated with the DARE procedure. The other infection was treated with the two-stage revision. And none of the revision was done for the loosening or the implant fracture. And also from here, we can see that only eight patients complained of noise while walking or other activities, but the symptoms were not bad enough to warrant any further surgical intervention. And regarding discussion, our study have shown that there is excellent patient reported outcome in terms of WOMEC and SF12 score in ceramic or no ceramic total hip orthoplasty. And our study have shown also that there's relatively low complication rate as compared to what is mentioned in the literature. There was no implant fracture reported in our study and no implant fracture, no aseptic loosening reported in our study. Only eight patient, that is 3.4% patient reported squeaking and still these symptoms were very mild and there was no need for any revision surgery. And survival rate was quite high in our study that at 10, 10 years, it was 98.6% survival and only 1.4% revision was done and no revision was done for ceramic fracture or aseptic loosening. And re regarding strength of our study, our study was prospective design study. We collected all the data prospectively and we included 238 patients in our study. That is a large number as compared to previous studies in literature. And we followed the patient at least for 10 years. And the mean age of the patient was less than 60. That is 160 patients were less than 60. And in our study, the revision rate was quite low. That is 1.68%. The limitation of our study was that we did not record the data regarding BMI and other medical comorbidities. And these medical comorbidities are an important factor in the outcome of the total hip orthoplasty. And uh, 23 patients lost follow-up at five years and 10 years. In conclusion, our study has shown that ceramic and ceramic total hip orthoplasty have statistically significant clinical improvement in WOMAC score and function score of SF12. And there is satisfactory survival at 10 years for ceramic on ceramic total hip orthoplasty. These are my references and that's all. Thank you for listening. 
if there is any comment. Any comment or any question is welcome. 